Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today I am sharing our plan for the 2024-2025 homeschool year. I have figured out our schedules and have gone over the year to see um, how I want to lay it out. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. Okay guys, so what you are looking at is the 2024-2025 year at a glance. Um, this you see all over the place, this is nothing new, but I like to do this to give me a visual of what our year is going to look like. Um, so basically what I do here is uh, highlight all the weeks that I know we want to take. Um, so I've kind of done that. Now in previous years we've done the Sabbath week. Uh, so we've done six weeks on, one week off. That has been a fantastic um, schedule for us. We've really enjoyed that. However, um, I don't know that we need it because this past year, this current year, um, we've skipped a few of them. So I think I'm just highlighting the weeks that I know I want to take um, for sure. And then, you know, I'll have some kind of uh, wiggle room if I want to put in another week or a few days. Um, in October, we usually like to go on some sort of vacation at the end of the month. We do not celebrate Halloween. That's something that we gave up a handful of years ago. Uh, so we started a tradition of kind of going out of town on Halloween or that week of. Um, so, but we haven't planned anything just yet and we usually kind of wait a little bit before we figure out where we're going to go. So I've left that open, um, because that's kind of open-ended. We can do a staycation. We can go away for a weekend out of town. Um, so that will kind of depend. So I'm just going to leave that open, um, to figure out exactly what we end up doing, what we want to do. From uh, Thanksgiving through January 1st, we do enjoy taking that vacation. Um, so with this, we're going to end up taking it through January 4th, just because uh, January 1st starts in the middle of the week. And I, yeah, I mean, we're just going to take the rest of that week off uh, before we start any sort of studies. Uh, but we always do Christmas school and things like that, so that continues on. Uh, I would say we're probably year-round homeschoolers. We just change the way that looks depending on the season. Um, and then we'll take a week off in February, which we always do, and we'll take a week, we'll take um, the holiday week for April or some sort of spring break. Uh, so that's what I've planned. Um, so according to the schedule, I'm landing on basically the same day that we'll be ending this year, uh, we'll be ending next year. So that is June 18th, uh, and we're excited about that. So we're going to take a little bit of a longer summer break this year. Uh, it's about eight weeks, which sometimes it's about six, and I just feel like we're ready for it. We just kind of need that longer break this year. Uh, again, we still do some sort of schooling. It just looks different. I will share a video coming up here soon exactly of what we have planned. Um, I have a fun unit study that I'll share with you guys that I've planned. So it'll be exciting. Um, I'm ready for the summer. You know, I'm just ready to be outside, garden, um, you know, go on trips. I'm um, just ready for <laughs> all of that. I don't know what it is about this year, but I'm really excited for it so that is our plan overall of how our year is going to look so I have finished our schedules I'll go ahead and bring you guys closer so you can see what those look like okay so here are my schedules that I've planned for the upcoming school year. Uh, now I've highlighted some of them so they're kind of hard to read but I'll go ahead and go through them with you guys. 
So this is our morning time or family time schedule. So I have Monday through Friday. Um, and for throughout Monday through Friday, we'll have uh, morning kind of Bible devotional catechism. So that's our discipleship. Uh, we do a hymn and we'll do our answers and our literature and poetry. So I have shared our family subjects for the upcoming year. Some things have changed already. <laughs> so I wouldn't be a homeschooler if I haven't decided to change something, right? Um, and I haven't shared all my resources for our morning basket. Uh, those are a lot of different books and resources that we kind of rotate in our basket. Um, so I'll be sharing that like closer to the start of next year of what our morning basket looks like per term. Um, I think that just will be easier. Um, but I do have some various things that will be in there that wasn't in the family subject video. So this part here is always going to be the same throughout the week. Um, as far as literature goes, uh, in previous years I've made like a 36 week plan of the read alouds and all of that that we are going to read uh, and that has worked wonderfully for me. It's just kind of been a plug and play. It's put everything on autopilot. Um, but this year I think uh, I'm just going to plan for a history read aloud and a couple literature reads per week and kind of get through those before we pull in something else. Um, with the previous way that we've done it, I've had a different read aloud per day that allows us to kind of sit through the book, enjoy the book, and go through it slower. Uh, but I think I'm going to change that up this upcoming year. So I'm not sure that I'm going to do the actual uh, schedule for the read alouds. Uh, I haven't decided, but I'm leaning towards just kind of going with that idea of just a few a week and going through those, finishing those, and moving on to the next. So I think that's going to be the plan. But uh, Mondays and Wednesdays, we're going to do our Explore the Holy Land, which is a geography curriculum that we're doing together as a family. Um, and then Tuesday and Thursday, uh, we're going to do Biology. Now, I've decided to change our science. We were going to do um, a Let's Talk Science Level 4 book together as a family. So that was um, Exploring the Physical World. Nope. Nope, nope. It's Exploring the Scientific Method. <laughs> um, and my kids really expressed interest in wanting to learn more about the human body. Um, I have done a unit study with them years ago when my daughter was in first grade so it is probably time for a refresher um, so I think we're gonna utilize um, easy peasy's science course their biology course uh, I've gone through it and there's a lot of hands-on there's experiments um, and I can cater easily I think to my eldest. Um, I do have another resource I'm going to pull in for that. Uh, I'll share that at a later video. But I'm basically just using the EP Biology um, on their website. It's free. Um, and I'm just going to use that as a resource, kind of like a spine, to share, um, you know, to do those lessons with my kids. Uh, so we're not going to do it exactly as is. That's why I'm bringing in other resources, but we are going to use it as a spine. So uh, I'm excited about that. I think it's going to be good. They're going to enjoy uh, that, and they definitely do need the refresher. So I think it was a good uh, change that we made. So we're going to be doing that on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, now on Fridays... Uh, is kind of like our enrichment days. We're doing all the extras, the fun stuff, of course, here is all our morning basket stuff, so that stays uh, 
pretty much the same as the rest of the week. Then we'll have art, we'll have music, and the kids will be doing Spanish with dad. My husband speaks fluently, so he's been taking on the teaching of the Spanish. And I realized I didn't even share Spanish in my curriculum videos. <laughs> We've been using um, a specific program and we're gonna try something else. So my husband has gone over a new program that he's gonna try, so I'll share that in an upcoming haul video when I do order it. I still have one haul left for this upcoming year, so I'll be sharing that with you guys when I end up getting that. But this is everything that they're gonna be doing on Fridays, um, so this will just be like a fun enrichment day that I'm excited for. Now when it comes to like extracurriculars, things that are outside the house, I don't have those in this particular schedule. We like to schedule those things in the evenings um, so it doesn't interfere with anything we're doing in our home school. Um, and you know, we also pretty much like to keep extracurriculars minimal um, just to not overcrowd our schedules. My husband works and you know, it's just, it works for us to just kind of have only a couple things going each week out of the house like that so that is our plan for our kind of family time and our morning basket now here we have my second grade plan now anything in these that are highlighted is because uh, it's with me so it's not an independent activity it's something that my son has to work with me on and of course he's my youngest he's still learning how to um, work more independently um, because with us and our goal and our goal in our homeschool is to um, move our kids into as much responsibility as they can handle and taking ownership of their work creating um, children that can work independently and um, you know kind of take that and go with it um, and feel strong in that so uh, you'll see with my daughters a lot of what she's doing is independent um, but with him so we have on Mondays he does his language arts his language lessons for living education. He'll be doing spelling. We'll utilize the spelling with that this year. Um, and with the spelling, we have kind of um, a way to do that with that program. So I have my children uh, write the spelling words three times each. Uh, usually we do a pretest to see what it is that they already know. So what they're writing and working on for the rest of the week are only the words that they had wrong on the pretest. Um, we do have a spelling box, so they go ahead and pick an activity from that spelling box and they work on that. They do definitions on Wednesday. Uh, there is a word shape activity that they do on Thursday. And then there's usually a worksheet in the workbook. I'm not sure it's in the second um, second book, uh, but they do do their test on Friday for that as well. So he'll work on his handwriting, uh, his calendar work. This is something we keep going over because he was kind of struggling with the concept of the calendar. <laughs> so. Um, that is included in his daily. We have his reading, uh, which of course that's highlighted. This is highlighted. He'll do that with me. Explode the code and pen time will be individual subjects he can do on his own and math lessons for living education um, as well. So most of these are the same on Tuesdays and Thursdays I'll bring in our grammar land resource and I'll just read from that. It's just a storybook that I will be reading with him a couple times a week. But basically his calendar looks the same other than Friday when we're doing our family work. Um, he'll also be doing 
uh, his map skills workbook. So he'll do a lesson from that and uh, work on that. Most likely with me until he gets comfortable with the format and I'm sure he can start working that on that a bit independently. So that is how I've planned all our work for my second grader. And now we have fifth grade. So this is my eldest. Um, she is 10. Uh, my son will be eight come the upcoming year. Uh, so basically with her, as you can see, there's less things highlighted here because the majority of this, I think she can do independently. Uh, of course, you know, I'm here. If there's something, there's an issue, of course, anything with like math, there definitely comes up, you know, different things she needs help with. That's fine. But for the majority, I think that she can get herself started um, with the work. And what I'll probably do is have her a planner this year and I'll plug in everything that she needs to do specifically as far as like page numbers, things like that. Or if there's something a little extra that I want to pull out for her to work on, um, I'll have that written down for her so she has a clearer view as to what she has to do on a daily basis. But this is like her overall schedule so she understands what subjects are to be done that particular day. Um, kind of like a checklist if she would want. This would be in a page like protector so she could mark it off uh, with a marker if she would like to do that. So on Monday, um, she's going to have a Bible plan and she's going to do her Proverbs uh, study. So that'll be something she does in the morning. She'll work on her language lessons for living education. She's on the level five and her spelling. So, so on Monday, she writes the words three times uh, after her pretest. So pretest is highlighted. That's something that I will facilitate. And she'll work on her pen time, which is her handwriting. She's going to read for 20 minutes. This will be um, a history based read that correlates generally with her history. Um, but it does overlap quite a bit, which is fine because it helps her recall different things that she's already read. Uh, she'll also do creative writing. Uh, this is another thing we do that I didn't mention in her curriculum video, but we keep it really simple. It's not like I'm bringing in any sort of curriculum. Uh, we have story dice that we utilize for this and she just rolls the dice and comes up with a story um, and writes that. So that's what she does in her creative writing. And she's come up with some really cute stories. So we just are going to continue that um, for her writing. There's also writing within the language arts book that she's doing this year. Uh, Progeny Press. She'll be working on her Progeny Press. So this is with um, Little House in the Big Woods. She'll be starting the year with that. Uh, so she'll be doing that independently as well. She'll be going through the guide and picking out what activities she wants to work on and then doing the correlating worksheets that go along with the chapters. Also, she'll be working on Math Lessons for Living Education 5. This has a video component uh, within the academy. So. So she will be uh, watching the video, which there isn't a video for every lesson because some of the lessons are kind of like a review. Um, but she'll watch the video and then she'll work on her lesson. So of course, there'll be things that come up in all of this that she'll need my help and that's fine. But she can also get herself started with all this. Um, and it, she will be working independently on her uh, history as well this year. Um, so that will be America's Story 3. Tuesdays, same thing. We have her Bible that she's going to be working on, her language, uh, spelling. She'll pick an activity out of the spelling box. Pen time, reading 20 minutes. She'll be doing easy grammar on Tuesdays as well as Thursdays. So she'll be doing a worksheet. 
from that. I'm not sure if I'll do one or two worksheets. Um, we'll see how that goes. And I'll just have those um, marked for her. Again, Progeny Press, whatever that is. Um, it looks like it's going to fall with um, kind of, she's going to read two chapters and then she'll have an activity and then she'll have worksheets and then kind of like an end of chapter activity. I believe it's kind of how it's set up. Um, so that'll be broken up amongst the week, however that's going to look. So she might end up, you know, reading the chapters, then working on the activities after. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I can just plug that in, whatever it is she'll be doing. Um, also math lessons, again, she'll work on that and America Story 3. Wednesdays, um... The only different thing, she has everything the same, spelling, she'll do her definitions. Um, and then there is a health resource, which I did share in her uh, curriculum video. I will post those videos down below if you haven't seen them. Um, it's a book that we're just going to be going over together. And uh, so we'll just sit together and read that book. I still have to pre-read it because there are some topics within it. Um, you know, it's kind of, we're, we're moving up a little more and more with the topic and there are some things, um, I think that are touched on in here that we haven't talked about. So I do just want to pre-read it. I still have to do that. I'll do that over the summer, um, to make sure those topics, you know, are shared in a way that I like, or if I need to fine tune it a little bit. So Thursday, the only difference is, is she won't be doing history. So we're only doing history three times a week, Monday through Wednesday. Um, so everything pretty much looks the same. She has a worksheet here for spelling and she'll be doing her easy grammar. So that's what Thursday looks like. And then Friday, of course, is our family subjects. Uh, she will be doing typing. So she'll do a lesson in her typing uh, as well as a lesson in her map skills workbook um, and then they'll be doing uh, Spanish in the afternoon so that'll be a later afternoon thing probably once we're done with our general studies uh, they'll sit down with dad and do that so um, that is how our schedules have turned out for this upcoming year. So I love how this turned out. Um, I'm excited for next year. Um, the way we do it is the kids do their morning chores and have breakfast and I let them kind of unwind a bit um, before we get started. So we don't start school till around 10 o'clock. Um, I kind of shared previously um, what a lesson looks like. And that's just a lesson now because we're coming to the end of the year. So, <laughs> um, every single lesson every day looks different. Uh, but we start around 10 and we just kind of work through our family subjects and then we separate. I work with my youngest and, um, my daughter does independent studies. And while she's doing her independent studies, if there are things that she needs help with, uh, things that she's struggling with, she just puts that to the side, uh, makes a little pile, whatever. And once I'm done with my youngest, he goes off, he plays, um, I work with her. So if she ends up finishing and there's still stuff I need to work with her on, uh, she'll just put that to the side and she'll go, she'll go do something, whether it's, uh, you know, ride a bike, go play, um, finish up any any chores she wants to work on that she needs to do in the afternoon, she can work on that early. Um, it really just depends, but I always want them doing something. So if she's done with her work, she can go and work on something else. So that's how we do it. Same with my son, when he's done um, with his work, he just goes on and goes to play. He goes outside. He, um, you know, we have a new puppy now, so they have a responsibility of walking the dog, cleaning up the dog. These are all things they can do 
<laughs> when they've finished um, with their work. So that's kind of how we've set up the homeschool year. That's what our plan is looking like. Um, I'm excited for it. It worked out quite well. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Just drop those down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'll have some more things coming up here soon. Um, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you want to stick around. And I will see you on the next one, guys. God bless.